Hey there, happy Tuesday. Thanks for joining me for a craft night with friends. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make cute embroidery kits for beginners. And I'm here every weeknight, Monday through Friday at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. And it's a time that we can relax and craft together. Uh, so tonight we are continuing on the letter B embroidery. Uh, this is the B butterfly embroidery for our ABC stitch along. We did some color tinting with colored pencils yesterday. Uh, so today we're going to be adding embroidery on top of that. So let's take a look. Alrighty, here we are. I'm going to zoom you guys way down right away. Let's check this out. So, okay, here is where we got yesterday. We colored uh, our whole thing in. We traced, we traced the design to our fabric first. Uh, we did do a little demo on the iron-on pattern as well, so we got that here. I think I'm going to do a uh, two of each of these because I would like to make one set into an accordion book. I think that'd be really fun. Um, but this one we're playing around with a little bit more. So we had colored pencils and we colored in all of the lines. And uh, I just realized I have marker. I'm like, what's all over my hand? I got marker all over my hand here. It looks like I have a, like a hand tattoo. <laughs> like what's going on? Uh, but anyway, uh, so we filled in everything with color. It's really subtle, uh, but it's just, it's, it's color tinting. So it's just adding like a hint of, of color on this. I really like how our letters turned out. So we'll just outline those letter Bs, but we did have enough time to outline, uh, the middle of it. It does look like a little jalapeno, I think so far, but hopefully it'll start looking like a butterfly soon. So here's my stitch and color guide here. So I'm going to keep referring back to this. Theoretically, we do not have to use these colors, but I thought it might be fun to, you know, be close to these colors and see what they look like on top of our um, colored pencil here. So anyway, I already have my thread uh, in here. I had to take photos of some things today, so I, I actually wove in the ends already. So we're ready to go. I'm just gonna keep going here. Let's finish up these antenna with some back stitch. So let me know how y'all are doing today. I'm happy to be embroidering again for sure. I'm excited for uh, doing this whole alphabet here. We will be doing it into a quilt. I'll have uh, more measurements and info on that soon, hopefully. Oh, thanks, Brittany. Brittany says it's really nice, or really pretty so far. Nice job. Thanks so much. Yeah, I think uh, just this little bit of color tinting is, is just going to add a little fun touch to it. And it, I did test... I didn't test this piece, but I did test washing one, like putting it through the wash. So a full wash and dry. And uh, the color seemed to stay a lot, a lot better than I thought it was going to actually. So um, I'm sure it would fade with like a zillion washes, but not, uh, not initially. So it did, I'm sure it, it differs for different fabrics and stuff too, but um Anyway, so I'm, I'm hopeful for once this is in a quilt that it'll do just fine if it's going through the wash a bunch. So we're just doing the back stitch here. I am kind of tempted to start the next antenna fresh from the bottom here so I'm not like leaping over in one giant stitch. So I'll probably, I'll probably start fresh. Um, I'll probably still use this thread though. Oh, Patty says she re received her needle miner today. Yay! Yes, yeah, so our little um, penguin and fish needle minders here. Um, I, uh, I'm actually out of them. We're going to order some more, but probably in a different colorway. So I'll, I'll let you guys know when that happens. Oh, uh, currently Celeste says, can you please do a quick tutorial, tutorial on the back stitch. Oh, there's always space between your stitches. Okay. So, um, I'll show you right here, but I'll also show you, um, like starting from scratch as well. Cause I'm, I'm right in the middle of it here, but basically if you're going, I'm going in this direction. So my forward direction is, is this way. So I'm actually going to start a stitch away from the beginning. Let's say this is the beginning. Uh, and then I'm going to go straight down backwards. So if I, if this is forward, 
I'm gonna go backwards a stitch. So I'm going straight down. And then you're gonna come up a stitch length away, like so. And then you're just going to, to like finish the stitch, you're gonna go straight down right in the exact same hole that that last stitch is coming out. So I find it's easier um, to doing the stab method where you're going like directly from the top and then straight down into that hole. And, and that's all there is to it. So coming up forward along the line from underneath and then going backwards to, to finish the stitch right in the exact same hole that the last stitch came out of. So let me know if that, that makes sense. And uh, once I come back, I'm, I'm gonna start fresh here. So that will be as if I'm starting a, a new line. But yeah, it'll be like, I'll be going forward in this direction. So I'll be starting a stitch length away and then going backwards with the stitch and then coming up um, in the forward spot there. Oh, perfect, thanks so much. Oh, good. Oh, you got the wrong green again. Oh, Rocket Robin, I, I think I just grabbed a green. I am, I am actually kind of looking at this and I think I might've actually originally used the celery color. Um, so this might be actually the celery color, not the lime peel. Um, I'm not quite positive. <laughs> so I did these patterns. Uh, this is kind of like the 10 year anniversary of these, these patterns. I think it's actually more like 11 years, but I'm calling it a 10 year anniversary of, of these patterns. And, uh, now I, in my new patterns, my new kits, I do actually label the colors, um, a whole lot better <laughs> than this and the stitches and, and everything. So, um, these older patterns don't have the actual colors listed. Uh, it was actually before I even used any particular set of colors. Now we use all the penguin and fish colors. So it's more up for your interpretation, I suppose. Uh, in this case, I'm using lime peel. I suspect based on the photo that it may have been originally the celery color. Uh, Stitch and Tori is asking, what am I doing with these uh, when I'm done? Uh, I'm this These particular ones that I'm stitching live with you guys, I will be making into uh, a, a quilt. We'll be stitching it into a quilt, and then we'll be uh, having an auction for it, and we're going to be donating the proceeds to uh, the Minneapolis Crisis Nursery here. So we'll be making it into a quilt and uh, having an auction. And that will not be till next year because we will be working on this, I think, through February of next year, uh, most likely. And e probably actually a little bit longer to actually finish the, the quilt. All right, we got the first antenna done here. I'm going to stitch in the end and we're going to start fresh at the bottom of the next antenna, I think. But yeah, so there's there's... 26 letters, and I'm doing two a month, pending everything goes well. <laughs> uh, this is the first month that we're actually working on it uh, with the letters A and B. And uh, I'm hoping, yeah, that if we do two a month, then actually we'll be done in March, won't we? So uh, March would be theoretically the last stitching month. Uh, okay, I'm going to weave in the end. And then we're also going to be doing uh, the quilt as you go process, which means that we are actually going to be quilting each piece, each embroidery on its own, and then be a, then attaching all those small little mini quilts basically together to make a, a larger quilt. And I'm hoping we do that during the month, uh, during this whole process. Uh, we'll get started uh, probably next month or or. April at the latest. Um, but yeah, so a quilt that we will auction off. And then also 10% of all the uh, all the proceeds from the, the sale of the patterns. So we do have a bundle that has all the patterns in, and then we have the patterns individually. And as digital patterns, uh, all the proceeds of all of that, um, like 10%, of the proceeds of all of that will also go to the Minneapolis Crisis Nursery. Uh, all right, so uh, here we'll, we'll 
we'll go over how to do, do the back stitch again. And uh, so here's my starting point, and I'm going to go in this direction along the um, blue line here. It's actually pretty light, the blue line already, but um, I think when we pressed it, it actually kind of dried it out. So some of the moisture of the water soluble marker, I think, kind of disappeared a little bit, but it, it's there. I can see it. I, I don't know if it's coming up on camera at all, but anyway, we're going in this direction. So I'm going to actually start a stitch length away from the start. So the starting point is right here. I'm going to start a stitch length away and I'm doing about an eighth of, of an inch for my stitches. They vary. Sometimes they're shorter, sometimes they're longer. Um, and it varies within a piece too. So, all right, I'm a stitch length away from the beginning coming up, coming up there. Now I'm going to go backwards back to the beginning. And that's my first back stitch. Then I'm going to come up a stitch length further along the line. And then we're going to go backwards again, right into the same hole as the last stitch. And that's that. So that's the back stitch. I'm actually doing it the stabbing method. The stabbing method is where you go straight up and pull it all the way through and straight down and then pull the needle all the way through. The other method is the sewing method of embroidery. And I'm going to just turn my piece a little bit to show you that because I, I always go uh, uh, right to left for that. So the sewing method is when you go in the, in the hole and then you come out along the line in the same motion. It actually helps to have your fabric a little looser in the hoop. So let's do that. So I'm going to come back up on the same line. So like that, we're, we're in, oops, we're in and out at the same time. And then I could just push my needle through. This is actually quite a bit faster and, and it's pretty traditional, a traditional way of stitching too. I'm, it's just not the way I learned. So it's not as like comfortable in my, in my hands. Um, but it is faster and I, and I do want to practice it more. So maybe we'll, Maybe we'll play around with this a little bit more today. So again, this is the sewing method when you go in for the first half of the stitch and come out for the second half all in the same time. I find that it's a little harder to be accurate, like um, the exact spot where I start and finish the stitch. Uh, I, I do find it easier, like I said, if it is looser because then the fabric is looser in the hoop because then when I come back up, there's some like give a little bit and I can kind of guide the needle um, where I want it to be a little bit more. So anyway, this is the sewing method of, of embroidery. So we'll just practice this for a little bit tonight. Um, I do rotate my piece a whole lot more, my embroidery, my whole like hoop a whole lot more when I do it this way, just cause it is most comfortable for me going right to left. So I just kind of try and keep my hand in the same place and move the embroidery hoop. Kind of like, <laughs> I've, I know I've talked about this before, but like my kindergarten aha moment, like I still, I literally, this is a, this is a life changing event right here. <laughs> my kindergarten aha moment was you move the paper, not the scissors when you cut. <laughs> Revolutionary concept. Like literally, I totally remember that. And <laughs> So that's kind of what I'm doing here, moving the hoop, um, not my, not my hands, not the needle. I literally, like, I think I was standing up even. I was standing up, cutting the, uh, turning the paper and the teacher's like, or turning the scissors to like cut something and they're like, cut, move the paper, not the scissors. Change my life. <laughs> All right, I'm literally not gonna have enough thread to go around here. I'm actually gonna just finish my thread right here, I think. So let's just go to the back. I'm gonna have to get a whole new piece to just do that little bit, but there's actually more. Um, we're gonna do like French knots and stuff with this color all throughout. Um, we'll probably do that later though. I like having the back stitches in, like the outlines in first. Um, and then we'll, we can go back in and do all the, the um, decorative ones. We actually have some lazy daisy stitches, so we'll probably do that uh, after the outlines. But I think I am going to just kind of continue with the outlines tonight. We'll get all the, as much of the outside done as we can. All right, so I'm going to weave in the end here again. It's a little difficult to weave in the ends when you're 
near the edge. But we'll get it. I always go that three times. It's the third time that kind of locks it in place here. See, this is the part that's taken. It's a little harder because I'm near the hoop at this part. All right, that'll do. Let's snip that end. Oh, Faith says, I love it. I want to learn more stitches. Oh, awesome. Yeah, so I will, I'm will. i live every night at every Monday through Friday at 8.30 p.m. And we are going to be stitching a whole lot. Um, for the rest of the week, we'll be working on this piece. If it takes the whole week. I'm not even sure it'll take the whole week. Uh, but we'll be doing Lazy Daisy stitches and French knots yet with, with this piece. Let's get his face in next, but I gotta finish his um his little breast of his, his antenna first. But I think then we'll get the, the little face. It's gonna annoy me to not have that little face in there. All right, so I'm I cut my like 24 inches or so. Do I put a spot of glue to secure the ends? Uh, GMA, I do not. So actually, uh, the I weave in the ends uh, back and forth three times. So like. One way, kind of grabbing as many threads as possible. The other way, and I'll actually show you again, um, going the other way as many threads as possible and then going the other way. It's almost like tying a long knot. Um, I love it because I don't have thread hanging out all over the place. It lets me have a nice clean back. And it actually stays. So you shouldn't need to secure the ends with glue or anything. It should be good to go. It's not going to It's not gonna work its way out, really. All right, so I have six strands in this embroidery floss, and I only want to use three, so I'm just kind of bopping the end again, and let's uh, that just separates the six strands so I can see them individually, and I'm going to individually pull uh, three... Oop, geez, sorry. <laughs> Hit my tripod. Uh, I'm going to pull three out of there, one at a time. Two and three my finger through there so it doesn't nod up and so I have these three together that I'll use later so I'm just putting that to the side and then let's match these three up oh my god Justin are you serious Justin says I found and watched the video of head Thurg's abdomen song oh my god I'm gonna have to look that up now it's like Rafi or something <laughs> I was talking yesterday of um how I always remember, like, the parts of an insect, because we had, you know, like, I don't know, some, like, cutesy kid tapes or something when we were little, and it was, uh, there was a song um, about insects or whatever, and uh, they were like, it goes like, head, thorax, abdomen, we're inside out, no bones within. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think it's head, thorax, abno abdomen. We're talking about my six-legged friends. <laughs> That's literally all I remember. But I think about it every time I think of, um, like, every time we, we, we talk about this guy. and Not every time I think about insects. I think about, like, I do not want them in my house. But <laughs> um, that song, though, pops up. So I'm weaving back and forth three times. This is my third pass. I've left a little thread here at the end. I'm going to trim that. All the threads were just a little different length, so I'm going to just trim it though now. So when you weave in the ends, you can also trim really close to the to the um, thread, backs of the stitches, so that's that's nice. And now that's, that's secure. Like, I shouldn't be able to pull that out. It's that third time, like, the going back. So, like, forward, back, and then forward again. Um, it's that third time that kind of locks it into place. And then we're ready to stitch again. And what I like about it is then I don't have any knots on the back. So I don't have anything that my thread can accidentally catch, to, catch on um, onto the back which makes me very happy. And there's no extra little floss ends hanging out anywhere that I can accidentally pull to the front. So it's just one little bit of annoyance that's out of the way by weaving into the ends. Head, thorax, 
Mike's abdomen. I'll have to find that, <laughs> Justin. I'll have to, I'll have to find that on YouTube. I'll have to like post it to the group. That's funny. A whole pile of, of those sort of songs swimming around in my brain from, <laughs> from those like tapes. They had to be tapes, like cassette tapes when I was little. I don't think any of that was on CD yet. That, that was a tape. This guy doesn't really have a head, thorax, and abdomen. He's just kind of one long uh, banana. <laughs> it's just a jalapeno pepper, I guess. That's okay. Is there a video of me, uh, Justin wants to know, is there a video of me rinsing away the stick and stitch? Um, there are probably lots of them. <laughs> um, I'm not sure I did a, a, like a short, quick how-to of the washing it away, but um, any of the videos that I'm using it in um, for other embroideries, like some of the early embroidery of the months, the last video will be, will include the, the washing, the stick and stitch away. Uh, we can definitely do a demo on that though sometime. Uh, all right. I mean, you can just really like, if you, if you are running some warm water, warm water works better. It just goes faster. Uh, run, run it under warm water or put it in a bowl of warm water. You'll immediately start to see it flake off. Um, so the big pieces will, will start flaking off pretty quickly, like within, you know, 15 seconds or so. Uh, then I always kind of have to like rub each stitch. Like it, it's kind of, it gets a little tedious, but I go over each stitch and I just kind of rub on it underneath the hot water like this. And just to make sure that all of the um, stick and stitch is gone. And then I put it in a clean bath of water just to rinse off anything that might any little specks that might remain because you don't want to accidentally iron any of that. It'll just get goop on your iron. Um, and then I actually press it right away when it's wet. And I do that uh, by putting like a, a fluffy towel down. And then I put it face down on the towel. The towel is um, squishy. So all my stitches won't become flat by pressing it because of the squishy towel and I will just literally like press the hot iron on the back it'll sizzle and I'm just kind of sizzling away all the wetness and it's also pressing it at the same time so that's that's kind of how I deal with the stick and stitch that's my full process but I mean you know there are, there is video of it <laughs> I know I'm just like saying it out loud um, and video is easier uh, but that's that's the general process all right, we got our little green outline on him. His little green antenna are looking cute. I want to get that face in. I need to see his little smiley face. So what did we use here for colors? It looks like we maybe used like a lavender. Actually, maybe we look here. Oh, maybe I used like a brown. Brown or lavender would be cute. I'm actually kind of leaning towards a, a, like a purple would be kind of cool. Here's a little lighter lavender. Just trying to, trying to choose. Let's go with the dark. We could just actually do the brown too. Kind of like the purple. Let's do purple. And uh, um, so the smile on here is kind of the same color as the outline. So we could just decide what color we want the outlines. I think originally, I know it's a little blown out, but I think originally I actually did do the Euro peach, this kind of coral color. But I'm kind of leaning towards maybe doing a, a pinkier color. So maybe we make some color decisions here quick. Um, oh, yeah, that, that's really pretty, I think. Just go full on bright pink. Oh, gosh, this orange is really pretty, though, too, isn't it? Do we want it more pink? So I do want to, uh, some of these, this, the flowers will be like this dark pink and this light pink then. The other option is like the orange and the pink. I think maybe I should just go pink, pink. Pink, pink, and then purple for the eyes. We could do pink for the mouth. And um, 
we could do like we could just we could do lavender so i didn't actually change the color of the bottom area so it is it is pink all the way throughout on this but it would be kind of fun to just um to add some lavender in here that'd be kind of neat because we did actually color this purple on the bottom maybe we do that okay there's some decisions for you all right <laughs> i am just using oh uh, marcia says orange on the bottom that'd be pretty too let's let's see what that would look like oh that'd be kind of pretty too kind of liking the purple what if the orange was the letters though that'd be kind of cute too or we could use even this lighter orange oh that's kind of fun because we have a little bit of yellow in there kind of feeling what we got going on here oh little weirdo says lavender is pretty i think it fits yeah i think that's i think that's looking cute down there so i'm gonna actually i'm gonna leave these nearby so i actually started out with um for with penguin and fish we have uh we have 23 different colors of embroidery floss, and I'm going to see how far I can get uh, through the, the whole 26 letters. So, uh, you know, we used a bunch for letter A already. Um, I just, I have like this whole big blob of the ones that we've already used and ones we haven't used yet. I'm just like, this is like a mess, but this is, this is how projects are for me. This is just literally sitting next to me while I work. Um, so I can just pull out what I need here. Uh, so I'm, I'm kind of working between pieces that are a mess and pieces that aren't a mess. And like, I'm only going to use this for the two eyes, but I am going to get my like normal full length of thread because I'm going to save it and we'll use it on a different, different animal here. So let's get, um, the three strands again. I'm using three strands for all this. Get on there, needle. Uh, next week, though, we'll be working on a um, design. It'll be the embroidery of the month. And this month, the embroidery of the month actually uses a different number of strands throughout the, the whole piece. So, you know, like this, this I'm only stitching with three strands throughout. Uh, here's the embroidery of the month, though. This we have, it's six, like all six strands up here. Then these other green ones are four strands. These light green ones are two strands. And, and then some other things are two strands there. And then all the way down the farthest items away, like the kitty and the rug and ball of yarn and stuff, those are all just one strand. So this can, this is like all throughout um, different, different numbers of strands. And we haven't done that with a pattern yet. So I'm excited for that. Oh, how can I turn on notifications when you're live? So I'm, I'm live every single night at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. Um, I don't always do a live event. You know, like, like I can set a live event on, on um, oops, shoot, on um, TikTok. But then you still have to sign up for it. So I don't think it's very effective for, like, notifications. Um if you follow me, there might be a way that if people you follow go live, you get a notification. I, I think there might be like a setting for that. Otherwise, I'm it's 8.30 p.m. Central Time. So I'm, I'm Central Time. Um, 8.30 p.m. Central Time for an hour, approximately an hour, uh, Monday through Friday. And we're going to be working on this guy for the week. And uh, we do other stuff besides embroidery, although this year is going to be... Um, kind of embroidery heavy because we are going through uh, this whole alphabet here. Eyeballs. All right, let's, um, I think I'm going to do, we'll do one side. But I think I might travel along the top of the head and then get the other eyeball just so I'm not putting a line right in the in between the eyes. Oh, <laughs> thanks, Olive. Olive says, I like your voice. Ah, that's nice. Oh, Anne's uh, finishing. Oh my gosh, you're finishing your, your tatted tatting shuttle. <laughs> I'm about, um, let's see, a good three quarters of the way through. I would even say four fifths of the way through on that. Uh, and I, I really, I'm really itching to finish it. I'm going to be visiting my, my family this weekend or this, yeah, this weekend and the rest of the week. So I don't know if I'll get it. 
get it done there, but I do want to, um, I might pop in live, not this weekend, but maybe next weekend I'll finish it. it. It really, I think I just have like one more hour to put into it. Um, but I'm excited. I want to stitch it and make it into a little, a little pouch. Ugh, and you guys, I just, I checked out, I, th I know I mentioned this already, but I didn't, I didn't share any of them yet. And they're not nearby anymore either, but I, I just uh, checked out a whole pile of tatting books and actually bobbin lace books from our library. And I just, I haven't even got a big chance to just dig into them yet. So I'm going to bring them um, to my parents' house and mom started tatting too. So we'll, we'll have to page through all of them and photocopy some patterns that look that look fun. But yeah, I just, I want to, I, there's not enough uh, hours in the day to, to craft. That's, that's the problem. Like I want to do, I want to like sit here and do the, um, work on uh, these embroideries, but then, then I immediately want to do like two more hours of like tatting right after. And I just can't do that. Ugh. It'd be fun though. Oh yes, uh, Robin, this is the wood violet. And then I think I'm going to use the, um, the uh, lilac season, uh, which is that lighter purple. So this is the darker purple. And then I'm going to use the lighter purple, I think down here. Oh, that last stitch was wonky. Ooh, I'm going to redo that. Ooh, I can tell I'm getting picky here. I just didn't come up. Uh, what direction did I come from? Man, I got talking and lost my place here. So I'm picking out two stitches. I just did not. Oh, you know what? I did do that right. I had one more stitch to go. Sheesh. I thought I left a huge gap between stitches, which I did on purpose because I was going to add, I was going to put one more stitch there. <laughs> so I'm just going to go back in the exact same holes I just did. I just got confused, I think. Um, <laughs> I had one more stitch to go and I just thought I had missed, missed the boat there. So I, I, I mean, this is a very, I'm using very small stitches here. I'm trying to basically do a, a hexagon shape. I kind of feel like that gives the impression of a, of a circle pretty well. There we go. Ugh, I like the purple. Purple's looking cute. All right, so I am going to, instead of just jumping straight across the face, because, you know, if I shine it to the light, you can see that line through, I'm going to jump back to the side of the, the head, and I'm going to go around the top of the head and then just come back down to where the second eye is. It's a little finicky and picky for, of me to do this, but I don't know. Must be getting tired. That's when uh, perfection brain pops on and perfection brain is the one that makes me do all those little steps. Uh, I do though often try to avoid jumping from one side to the other side of, of the face if I can, just because I don't want that. I don't want to see the line of, you know, of the, of the floss on the back. I don't want to see that coming through to the front, especially through the face. Other places I kind of play it by ear, but through the face, I don't want to see that. Oh, Anne, um, Anne is doing that tatted, um, that tatted design that's supposed to look like a tatting shuttle. Uh, so she's the one that suggested that project and I'm, I'm really liking it. So you did the one, um, without the picos around it. I actually like that one better, I think, but I, the one with all the little picos looked like it went better with that letter T that I did. Um, you know, cause I had all the little picos on. So I'm like, eh, fine. I'll do the one with all the picos. But I do think that one without is pretty like, it looks just classy and sleek. I thought. So that's cool. You'll have to share it in the Facebook group. I'd love to see. All right. I like that. His cute little eye. So actually, this is all that I'm going to use this purple for probably on this, this piece. So I'm going to weave in the ends. I'll definitely save this piece because, like I said, we're going to just keep using this thread for all of these patterns. And this is a plenty big piece yet that I can use on a different pattern. 
Okay, and uh, let's do the little smiley mouth now. And that is going to be the same color that I do on these outside wings. So I think we'll just we'll just do it and then I'll just jump over to the wing, I think. It's not crossing over the face very much, so I don't think you'll see it. Um, so I think I'll weave in on this side maybe. And then just jump over, do the smile, and then jump over here. So yeah, I'm gonna do the outlines first. So I'm gonna use the, this is the garden rose, so this is the dark pink basically. If you're following the colors. Uh, and again, I don't, I don't think this was the original color I used. I think I used um, the, the Euro peach color, that slightly orange, orangey um, or pinky orange. I, I remember using that a whole lot for this series. I think that's like one of my favorite <laughs> favorite colors. Um, but this time we're gonna use this pink. I think the pink's gonna be cute. One, two, and zoop, three. Gotta add the sound effect. Okay. Put these together again. Alright, I'm going to snip the end just so it's a little cleaner, easier to thread. You guys, it was freaking 40 degrees out here today. Like, heat wave and gorgeous and clear sky and sunny. Oh my god, it was the best. Uh, we had the best um, walk day. We've, we're still keeping up with our walks. Um, we've been walking every day outside no matter what the weather or temperature uh, since January 1st. And uh, dang, it's just gonna get nicer and nicer soon. Probably not totally soon because it is February and we just happen to have a nice day. But uh, you know, soon it'll be nicer. I'm, I, we haven't been tested though yet. Like I haven't, it hasn't been like a mega snowstorm or like, you know, later it'll be like a horrible rainstorm or something. We haven't tested ourselves by going out in something like that quite yet. But you know, I don't know if it's hailing or if it's dangerous outside, then we, then we'll skip the walk. <laughs> but I don't know, I'm, I'm proud of us. We don't keep habits very well like that. And uh, we've been doing well. Okay, th this purple and pink looks super cute together as the face. It's just so sweet. Ah, all right, I feel much better <laughs> now that I can see his face in there. Ah, that makes me happy. All right, now let's just jump over to the wing. And this is all just backstitch still. We're going to just stick with the backstitch tonight. Oh, dang. Adrian says 40 degrees and a heat wave. It was 77 degrees here in Southern California. And oh my God, 77. That sounds amazing. Yeah, 40 degrees. Uh, whereas like yesterday it was nine degrees and we thought that was nice. Nine degrees was feeling okay outside. So <laughs> if that tells you anything, it goes from nine to 40 uh, within a span of a day. Ugh, and Amy says it was in the 80s here in San Gabriel Valley. Oh, man. Making me super jealous. Oh, Cheryl, yes, I, re I replied. Uh, your, the tatting looks freaking amazing. Uh, Cheryl just did, um, did some beautiful, um, colorful uh, doilies with tatting. Like, I, that's... That's really, I, I haven't done the tatting yet. I know it exists because I'm looking at it in all of, you know, the books and I haven't, I just haven't done it yet. But the idea of um, the different rows of tatting. So like finishing round one and then like jumping to the next row and doing it. So I'm, I'm kind of, that I, I see that being in my future because uh, you have to do those like mock mock picos and stuff to jump up to the next row. So I, I'm, I'm starting to learn starting to see the concepts uh, within doing that. I just have not done it and I don't know how to do it yet. But I know that they exist, so I know what I need to learn next. <laughs> but those are beautiful. 
<laughs> Marcia says, after below zero 40 is a heat wave. Yep. Yeah. It was, like, negative 20 a couple, like, last week sort of thing. I mean, you know, we've... It's just crazy how much... Um, oh, I drew this kind of funny. Uh, how dramatic the shifts in temperature are this time of year in in minnesota wisconsin area um like you wouldn't think of jumps that big in summer like what i just said it was you know nine degrees and it went to freaking 40 degrees right that's like uh 31 degrees difference so that's like going from 50 degrees to like 81 degrees overnight like that's a huge crazy jump But I, oh man, it just, it just, it, things were melting today. <laughs> it was crazy. It was, it was nice. Uh, this is, uh, the, I'm doing the back stitch right now. Um, cheek. I'm doing, uh, the back stitch. So again, I'm kind of going, my forward direction is, is this way, but I'm actually coming, I'm coming up in the forward direction and then I'm going backwards along the line and then I'm going right in the exact same hole of the last stitch. So that's why it's called a back stitch because you're kind of going backwards with the stitch. So I'm coming up a stitch forward, stitch length away forward. And again, I'm using about an eighth of an inch for my stitches. And then I'm going backwards again to where that hole is of the last stitch. And that's all there is to it. We're just going forward from underneath and then backwards from the top. Oh, I think this pink is looking nice and bold though. It's fun with the extra little like tinting to it. I think I think the little tint is subtle and, and cute. Like I, I'm not sure it's something you would think about immediately looking at it, but it, it's just like a little little bit extra, which I don't know, it's fun to try. Oh yeah, no problem. Ask away, for sure. It's feeling a little loose, so I just tightened the fabric a little bit. Hi, Vicky. Gosh, and I'm still, I'm just reading, Amy, your, your comment again, that it's, that it's 80s by you. I'm just thinking, that made me think about, like, <laughs> it takes me, like, five minutes to get ready maybe even more uh, before we go out on the walk because I'm <laughs> so here's here's my process here and it takes forever John lets me start getting ready way before before he gets ready I don't know how he goes so fast but first I got to put on my wool socks above my um, on top of my normal socks and then I put a whole other set of pants on top of my pants so they're they're like these car hearts that my mom had that were too big and uh um, so they're too big for me too, but they're perfect for putting over other pants. So those are like my outside winter pants, um, just so I'm warmer. And when it's really cold, I, I have to put long underwear on, then my normal pants, then my outside pants. <laughs> so that I put my outside pants on, then I put my boots on, which I love. I, I love my boots so much. Um, I'm still really happy with them. And then I put my neck warmer on which is like a whole fleece thing then I put my full winter coat on which is actually a little small so that's annoying and then I actually put my raincoat on top of it just in case it's super sloppy outside and now it's just a habit and I like having it on because it's longer than my than my winter coat and then I got my full mutton chop fuzzy hat that is the game changer of all of winter I never get cold anymore when I have that hat on. And then I got like mega ski gloves that I put on. And I even have like these blue blocker glasses that have like little side panels <laughs> on in case it's windy or like, you know, ice wind everywhere. So <laughs> it's a whole freaking system. But I'm never cold. All my walks are freaking perfect even when it's negative 20 degrees out. But it's a whole process. So I'm just like, I'm reading like you're 80 degrees and I, I'm just like, oh, soon I'll just be able to 
stand up from where I am and walk out the door and not have to change anything. Won't that be nice? Oh, gosh, I'm waiting for that. All right, this pink is looking cute. All right, and, and I have more pink here, but I don't, I don't want to jump across this whole guy. So let's see, I could either, ugh, I could start fresh. You know what, I think I might just travel up along his head and then like start, start um, from the top here. And I'm not gonna have enough to finish that either, but at least I'm still using up this floss. I think, you know, this is a little weird and a roundabout way to do it. Look how pretty it is from the back. So the back of a back stitch almost looks like a stem stitch which is a little bit thicker of a stitch. And I don't know, the thicker stitch is actually looking nice. This would have been a good opportunity to do, to do a stem stitch, but oh well. For now, we're sticking with the stitches that it says to. Oh, I didn't really, ooh, I didn't really get that very well. Let's just kind of try and tack it up. There, <laughs> that works. Okay, now I have enough for a couple more stitches, I think. And then we'll have to start a fresh piece. But I didn't want to waste a few stitches, so. Going around the bend. But I think um, now, now you can get more of a sense of like what this color pencil scenario is actually going to look like. So it really is, once you get the, the bright stitching and everything there, it really is kind of pushed back. Um, it, it's, it's not like a prominent feature of the piece like it's not your initial thing that you see but you still do see it like it's still just like that subtle little tinting of the piece so I think it's fun especially once we get all the little decorative stuff in here it'll it'll be even more just like a tint in the background so that was a fun suggestion I, I forget who suggested that but uh, yeah, it's, it was fun to give the color tinting a try again. A few more stitches I think I can get out of here. But yeah, we'll have to get another piece for sure. I think I have a, oh yeah, I already have another piece, the other half of, um, I'm gonna cut the, this little fuzzle off. I have the other half of um, the six strands. So that's always nice when that's readily available. Are you doing the letters with the same stitch? Yep, I think I am gonna do the letters just with a back stitch. Um, so like for, for the letter A, I did a satin stitch where we filled it all in. The satin stitch was a, a feature of the rest of this though, like his, his teeth and the scales or spine were a satin stitch in the wings. So it felt good and that's what all, all the patterns, um, all the original patterns do have the satin stitch, but we're playing around a little bit more with these patterns. And since I colored it in, I think, yeah, we'll just continue with the back stitch. So. Yep, um, and I think I'm gonna do it with this kind of tiger lily orange color, although I'm not 100% sold on that yet, but I do kind of like it still. Uh, so I think think that's my plan, because I do have a little bit of that orange that I put in the B, letter Bs. And it's just bright and fun like these other colors. Uh, so, uh, uh, JW is asking, will the color pencil wash out? So I did do a test. Is that test within arm's reach? Hmm, where did that go? Eh, I'll have to find it. But I did do a test with uh, a piece that we did a little while, while back. It was pretty subtle, the piece. Um, but I did take a before and after photo and I don't think it changed much at, at all. So it didn't just like wash out as if we've done nothing. Um, I'm not even sure it faded all that much. I'm sure it'll fade after some time uh, a little bit, but it was still there. So I think the heat setting uh, really does the trick. 
I mean, you're kind of almost dyeing the fabric to some extent, I suppose. Um, so, I don't know. I ran it through the wash, washer and dryer uh, on Sunday. Or, no, I think I just did it during the day yesterday. And uh, color was still there, just like how it was before. I haven't tested a larger piece like this, but I guess I don't see why, um, why it would change much. But that's why, you know, I like outlining lining it and everything. I don't want to depend on that color being there forever. Um, I haven't washed something over and over and over again to, to test. But that initial test, it seemed to stay just fine. Actually, I was, I was kind of surprised. I thought it might come out quite a bit more, but it was, it worked pretty well. Oh, Pink Froggy, hello. Uh, oh, thanks, uh, Cheeky. I'm sure I'm not going to say that right. Cheeky Strata. The ironing may leach it out. Oh, since the color pencil is waxy. Uh, so, yeah, so that's why we, that's why I wanted to iron it first. Um, you can do it with, with uh, crayons as well. Because, um, well, I, and I pressed it with a paper towel. So, uh, the, it, it, sucked out the wax basically just kind of leaving the pigment or at least that's the that's the theory i think um so i think that's that's kind of what's happening but yeah i was really happy that the color stayed we'll have to maybe try one of these bigger ones and at some point and test it out. Oh, thanks, Susan. Susan says the needle minder is cute. Uh, that's our, it's our logo. Uh, we actually just sold out of them. Uh, so I'm hoping to make a pile more. It's our, it's our first needle minder that we made. And now I'm like, dang, I want to make a whole pile of needle minders because I think it just turned out super fun so stay tuned for new uh, more needle minders for sure don't know when but um i'm excited <laughs> to make more <laughs> and definitely uh am taking requests on what people like to see oh yep yep i did iron it uh jw okay i just i just knew that when you do batik oh you use an iron to remove the wax oh yes exactly well, this is actually, that's interesting. So with a batik, so batik fabric, I don't know if, if everyone knows what that is. Um, it's just a different process of coloring fabric. So most fabric, like with all your designs, it's either screen printed. Um, that's usually done overseas where they're just like screen printing tons of layers on it. And it's really um, just perfect and high quality. Uh, there's also digital printing. Uh, if any of you are familiar with like Spoonflower, that's a place where you can print your own fabric online and stuff. So that's digital printing. Different process completely, different way it mixes colors, different way it lays down colors on the fabric. Uh, batik is a whole nother process. Um, you're basically dip dyeing fabric. So the fabric is actually being put in like a big vat of color. Um, so actually the, the backs and the front look the same when you, when with batik. And uh, uh, the nice thing with the, like the cool interesting thing about batik is that you could put wax on, uh, like in different designs, it can either be printed on with blocks, the wax or, or drawn on, on, and then you dip it and then you heat away the wax and then you're left with like these gorgeous patterns and you can like dye the fabric first and then put wax on and then dye it with a different color. It's so freaking pretty. Um, but yeah, actually like saying it's like a batik made me think that, that this is kind of like a batik because we are just kind of like laying on color <laughs> and then getting rid of the wax. Um, it's not like we're adding the wax as a resist and then, then dyeing it, but uh, it's, it does have that get rid of the wax thing going on with it for sure. Ugh, it'd be awesome to try dyeing our own batik fabric at some point. 
I've never done any dyeing of stuff. I don't even think, I don't think I've done, like, um, tie-dye or anything either. You think you'd do that at some, some place at some time. Um, but I don't think I've done tie-dye either. So that, that's kind of on my list. Not, not tie-dye, tie-dye specifically, but, um, fabric dyeing, like where you get the whole plastic bin out and you mix your colors, that, that would be fun to do. I've not done that yet. I actually, I have so much of this muslin, um, like scrap muslin from all of our kits, like pieces that just weren't, like have flaws in, like weren't good enough to sell or, or be in our kits or just like the scrap ends of fabric. I just want to sew all of those together to make like new fabric and make quilts out of there and like dip dye those in, in color. I think that would be just like so freaking fun. So that's, that's on my someday craft, craft agenda. Oh, uh, rockin' Robin, um, shoot. Hopefully, um, hopefully the feed gets a little bit better. It sounds like, um, maybe everyone's feed is, might be skipping a little bit here. Ooh, uh, JW wants to try dyeing some yarn and making a sweater with it. Ugh, see, that just sounds so interesting. I've seen that a lot online, you know, people doing that, and, you know, that's people's whole things that they do, and it just looks fascinating, but I've, I've never, never done that before. Dyeing definitely needs to get on. Fabric dyeing, not just, you know, not being around anymore, dying. Uh, not that kind of dying. That dying doesn't need to happen, but the other kind, fabric dying. Oh, Adrian says needle miners are very addictive. Yeah, I know. Now I just want all the needle miners and keep keep making stuff. Ooh, uh, um, Anne says I've I've dyed wool to drop spindle spin. Ugh, fun. That sounds awesome. How are we doing? Oh my gosh, you guys, it's it's like 9.30. <laughs> well, I was going to get a whole other thing of color out and start stitching, but I think we'll we'll just uh, end it here and pick that up tomorrow. So I think tomorrow we'll um, do this little purple. I still like the idea of lavender down there. I think that's cute. So in the original, again, I, I didn't actually change colors from the two, and I am using slightly different colors throughout uh, but we're playing playing with it a little bit. Um, so I'm actually going to do a different color down here um, than, than the top color. So I like the purple because we did, we did kind of tint it with more purples than pinks. So tomorrow is going to be a whole pile of different stitches day. Uh, we'll, ooh, I'm also going to be on location, you guys. So uh, just a reminder, tomorrow I will only be on YouTube and TikTok. Um, Dang, unless I can get a third phone <laughs> from a family member, member and and post somewhere. We'll see. Uh, in that case, maybe I'd be on, on um, Facebook. But chances are I'll probably just be on um, YouTube and um, TikTok tomorrow. Uh, and Thursday and Friday because I'll be on location at my parents' house. Uh, but anyway, so it'll be a little bit different setting tomorrow here. Uh, yep, Pink Froggy, uh, I have a whole pile of kits, um, in our link. Oh, yeah, and they're all 100% beginner friendly, and, uh, and I'm always here if you wanted to ask any questions, and we have videos and stuff, too. We also have a free pattern where it goes through each of the stitches, um, too, with video if you, if you want to, um, check that out. But, yep, just check my link, and there's a discount there as well. Uh, so, all right, I will uh, do the purple tomorrow, but yeah, so tomorrow will be the start of a pile of different stitches. So we'll, we'll start with a back stitch, like how we've been doing to finish these, but then we have all of these lazy daisies in here. So they're kind of hard to see on just my pencil drawing, but here, uh, we'll be doing all the little petals. So that's with a lazy daisy stitch or a, um, single, uh, chain stitch. It's like lots of single chain stitches in a circle. That's what makes a lazy daisy stitch. Um, so that will be happening tomorrow. And then also piles of French knots. So we'll go over uh, how I like doing French knots and maybe a couple of the things you might be doing wrong with the French knots. 
a couple of the things you might be, uh, if you've tried French knots before and are struggling, uh, I may have a reason why, and uh, we'll fix that up. <laughs> so uh, piles of different stitches tomorrow, and uh, we'll probably still have to have some time to do more stitches than on Thursday. But dang, we might be done a day early, which means uh, maybe we'll do some tatting, or maybe we'll kind of... Uh, maybe I'll have figured out the quilt stuff by then and we can kind of talk about um, the quilting of it all and maybe even start that a little bit. Uh, we'll probably wait on the quilting actually, but we could maybe talk about it a little bit more. Uh, so if we do get done with these, we'll probably just pick up another project uh, like the tatting that I'm not quite done with. Um, but, but for the rest of the year, if we do have like an extra day here and there, which I am expecting, to have like maybe a day, maybe even two days sometimes. Um, not all the time, but on, on these embroideries. And it's those last couple days of the weeks, the two weeks, week one and week two, that I want to start actually quilting these. So we'll we'll have the back fabric and, and batting. We can prep a bunch of that stuff. And uh, um, then we'll just make like little mini quilts basically that will then cut down and sew together into a larger quilt. That's the quilt as you go is the technique. And uh, it's exactly what it says. We're gonna quilt <laughs> as we make the, as we stitch basically. And then we'll be putting all those pieces together at the end to make a larger quilt. We can put them together as we go as well. But anyways, that's where we're gonna start the quilting. Uh, it's not gonna be just waiting till, till the end. I wanna kinda have this progress going so we can still get this done in, in like March, April. Um, of next year. <laughs> it's like such a big project. Uh, but I think we got a good start. I really love how this tinting is looking now. All right. Hello again. I'm going to scooch you over for a sec here. Uh, but yeah, so I think this is turning out cute. Here we go. Yeah, you can really start seeing that that's that tint is coming out next to the stitches. I think that's looking great. Um, yeah. So on location again tomorrow, uh, like I said, uh, same time though, and uh, 8.30 p.m. Central Time. And we'll just uh, stitch it up tomorrow, a whole pile of different stitches. All right. Uh, and bring your questions. I'm happy to answer them uh, during the lives. And yeah, so I'll see you tomorrow at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. Have a lovely evening. Good night.